back as we continue our our discussion on structures and tree breaks. This is part two. On part two right here, we're going to get into some interesting topics here. Uh, we're going to stay try to stay on topic with the structures and tree breaks, and uh, we're going to get a little bit more into for, uh, formations. All right. Uh, on this, in this round here, we're going to discuss Native Americans uh, and what they're responsible for doing, what they were known for doing for some of their tree markings that they made. And uh, we're going to get into that here very shortly. All right. And uh, we're going to try to discuss, uh, we're going to get more to the Sasquatch realm, the possibility of what the meanings are with the different various tree breaks and structures and how we could relate them uh, with what our known primates do. And then also, we're going to throw in, like I mentioned, Native Americans. With what we find among us, do the Native Americans have any relation to the symbols of what we find among us? Uh, we're going to get into that, like I said, here very shortly. Uh, so I'm going to do a three-way comparison, uh, well, more or less, with what we find among us, with our known primates, and Native Americans. Is there something that matches up is there an equal comparison we're gonna find out all right we're gonna see if Native Americans are responsible for what's going on in our woods here do they have a relation do Sasquatch have a, have a relationship with what's being done here a lot of people say so or seem to believe it's possible which I believe it's possible but they would have to be some form of of an intelligence, which I believe they are, no doubt. They're very smart, you know, beings. I mean, they're smart enough to avoid mankind. Um, so, go figure, right? Okay, well, stay tuned. Well, as you see, as you're going to be seeing throughout this little uh, video documentary, you're going to see some po uh, photos posted here, okay? And these photos that you're going to be seeing are Native American um artwork uh not really artwork but it's work that was uh done on these very large trees many many years ago when these trees were just small saplings they were bent and twisted by native american hands uh and what these were were always indicating towards a, a food source or more or less like water so um we're going to get into a little bit of basic history about native americans and and we're going to discuss about trees today and how um and the different various species of trees um, and what they were used for and so keep in mind our Native Americans were our first set of arborists they knew trees very well uh, they took care of trees they know how to care for trees and they knew how to use trees to care for themselves you know as far as medical uses so that's something we're gonna look into and I think a lot of people need to know this a lot of people are aware of this so this should be a, a pretty uh, exciting and interesting uh, topic here. And after this is done, um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and uh, share your thoughts on what the, or comment below. Uh, your comments are welcome. I know a lot of you probably don't agree with me. That's fine. I don't expect everyone to agree with me. I'm just presenting what uh, what are facts and then the possibilities. Um, very few things I point out as fact in here, but with the Native American uh, history and the acknowledgement of, our, of what they are, um, are saying and claiming about trees, this is fact. This is history. Okay, so we're going to get into that here very shortly. All right, uh, right now, as you're viewing right now, you're seeing the various um, the trees. They have like an L shape or an elbow. They look like an elbow. You know, someone bending their elbow going up. This is exactly the tree formations from the base and the trunk of the tree going up and the elbow going straight up. Exactly what you're looking at. These are formations that the Native Americans can, uh, made on trails. This is part of the trail markings. And this is something that was common for them to mark trails, uh, very uh, leading to uh, food sources and water, um, you know, sources. Um, so 
this is something that's very common. Perhaps a number of us have come across these. I know I have. I've come across quite a bit of these. These are very common in a lot of areas, especially right here on the East Coast. I'm sure many of you have seen these on the West Coast. Uh, they go from the East to the West. A lot of our known Native Americans have been known to do these. Various different tribes have done this. All right. Um, now, another thing, as far as other tree markings and tree formations and structures, what other things are common or related to them? Well, let's look at these, all right? You heard me talk about the primates, some of the th things they do. A lot of their formations, uh, they're bent, broken trees. They're not directionals, okay? Tree breaks, according to our Native American, I mean, excuse me, tree breaks um, to our known primates, they're for different purposes. They're not directional, so they're usually intimidation. Um, intimidation, um, dominance, a threat. Okay. Now, Native Americans, they do this for another reason. They'll bend the tree. Okay. They'll bend the tree just like I make it. They'll bend it and form it and use it for directionals. A bend tree formed and healed the way it is is a directional to them. A bent tree some bent trees yeah they didn't say you know according to the research it's a bent tree not a snap tree a bent tree a tree that's been bent over okay not snapped but bent over and according to these pictures these are referring to what they're calling bent trees okay they're not snapped over broken trees referring to directionals all right these are bent trees. Yes, they were bent and deformed many, many years ago with our Native Americans. And over the years, they continue to heal and grow this way, forming the formations that you see here. All right. Now, other structures, uh, uh, other tree uses for Native Americans were used for either uh, home, housing, shelter, uh, and a number of other uses, medical uses. Um, Clothing. They used a lot of trees for, to make clothing. Um, and a lot of uh, furniture, home material, such as uh, woven baskets. Um, you know, different sources. Uh, they've used special, uh, specific special trees to make their boats. Um, Native Americans were very intelligent, very crafted you know men and women now uh, and they're well gifted and so we're taking a look at our native americans i'm not going to drag this out sasquatch all right we're going to get right to it because a lot of people are like well what about sasquatch okay a sasquatch from uh are they known for breaking trees uh through observations and reports yes okay um now I believe they are responsible for many different tree formations and tree breaks, etc., etc. But keep in mind, you cannot neglect the other happenings and possibilities. I pointed these out to you. In other words, you cannot state and claim that all of them are from a Sasquatch. That's the whole point I'm trying to get at. I'm not saying none of them are made from, because yes, I believe, honestly, yes, they are, because I found quite a bit that I've actually ruled out weather. There's some that I've ruled out wildlife um, so these are things you got to consider you got to understand whether you got to understand nature now there is particular structures and tree breaks and twists that were formed something it took hands it took a great strength to make some of these formations that I've come across whether bears they're responsible for a majority of it but bears excuse me sasquatches yeah, we can't forget them too. They are too. Um, some of the formations and the structures I come across are do appear to be Native American in, in style and formations, such as the teepee type structures, the ones that form teepees, or Native American symbol symbolic looking uh, formations and structures. Um, there's other odd findings I've come across in the wood that which I don't believe is a natural. Um, for example, I find in various areas, and it's it's very interesting. You'll find an X on the ground with a standing tree. 
Now, I have reason to believe, and I can't prove it, I can't prove it, but I believe, on my honest opinion, I believe that it's some kind of symbolic symbol that's being left behind. For what reason, we do not know. I believe it's a type of marker regarding re, uh, possible territory, or it could be another form of dominance, but because we don't know, we have no way of proving this. But it's my, I have reason to believe. Because in various areas where I've gained, uh, I've gotten activity, I've been finding these in various locations. So, if you watched my video from yesterday uh, on part one of the tree structures and breaks, um, I, I at one point I do uh, point that out in one of the formations of structures I found that I was explaining. Um, so. Just think about what I'm saying. Um, we can't forget about who's responsible and what's responsible. We gotta understand what, why are they responsible. We gotta have proof to back up if we're making that claim of who did this or who did that. Am I right? It makes sense, right? Well, consider it. Well, you got to see a good majority of uh, just a few of what's the uh, you know the Native Americans were responsible for doing. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, also, the formations, uh, a lot of the structures that you see that I posted, these are some of the uh, findings I've come across that I found very interesting. That, to me, come across as almost like Native American symbolic symbols in the woods. Uh, some of these formations and structures, I believe, are possible, possible, structures and symbols meaning something some of them are lead uh, possibly directionals some of them could be directionals we're not saying they are they can be okay it's a theory you can stick on one theory if you want but try to consider other possibilities and then work from there and see if they you know lead you know lead to the other possibilities don't stick to one theory you got to be open minded you know it's to help us understanding and learn the other possibilities because we might just be blinded to and, and think in one way because the majority of us only think one way about what can be we got to consider the other possibilities okay we can't always consider Native Americans being responsible for what Sasquatch might be doing okay we can't be thinking like that because that's thinking one-sided you got to consider Sasquatch being their own species okay their own kind of species and if you ask me when I say own species which a lot of people believe in that too they're their own species along the primate family <laughs> I know you probably some of you probably didn't want to hear me say that well that's what I've always stated I personally I believe they are a form of ape okay I think that's safe to say alright so oh Wait a minute. <laughs> we got a visitor here, folks. Uh, let's go to hear from. Him. I'm glad I could be here with everybody. Um, no, the, the those those broken trees out there. Those those broken trees. They're not from a no not no Sasquatch. I see a lot of them bears out there breaking those trees. Yep. Oh, and some of those bad storms. I see some of the poor trees get broken from the bad storms. Yeah, some of us Sasquatchies, some of us do that. Yeah. Yeah, we have reasons why we're behind them. Uh, and what, you know, everything you say that we do this for, you're right on. You're dead on. Yep, you keep on doing what you're doing, and I like what you have to say. And uh, we're behind you 100%, Mr. Benoit. Keep up the great work. And remember, Sasquatches don't always break trees. It's those damn bears. Damn it, Yogi. And about them arborists, oh yeah, them arborists should be in a landscape company. If they know what they're talking about and they know they're an arborist, well, they should be able to identify what caused that broken tree I'm not saying it's a Sasquatch because there's many diseases that these trees get out here yep and these diseases get rotten they form from the inside out sometimes sometimes they display on the outside 
by these broken trees and they're rotting on the inside out. They get hauled out. Sometimes a tree will break and it'll look fresh and strong, but it's from diseases. And when the wind blows, it, it'll it snap that tree. That's right. It will do that. And not including those damn bears. Those bears will climb up and pull down and yank on trees. When the rate comes down, they cause a twist in a tree sometimes. People don't realize that because they're too ignorant. Anyway, I got to go this time. Bye. Well, that was interesting. Um... Well, I guess that's one of my followers. I mean, he... What a character. <laughs> well, thanks. I never even got his name. Anyway, I, I like his little shirt there. It said, talk nerdy to me. That's pretty cool. Um, anyway, yeah, like I was trying to say before that fellow popped on here, I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, um... Questions about tree structures and formations. Uh, basically, my presentation is to get everybody to think and um, try to think outside the box a little bit and try to use your mind to have other possibilities. I'm presenting a little bit about our known, uh, you know, about our Native Americans and some of the things they were responsible for. Like right here, I didn't, I might have bypassed this, but let me bring this back up right here. The Native Americans were responsible for. Uh, using trees and various sources. Let's look at the different types of trees that were common for the for their medical uses and other purposes. Uh, as you see right here, cedar, uh, pines, oaks, maples, so forth. These are trees, and they each, if you read right here carefully, I'm not going to read them off because you can see for yourself that these trees were used in various uh, ways and sources. And if you need to pause this, because I'm not going to keep it up here long, if you need to pause it to read it through, feel free. Uh, you have control of this video as you're watching it, so if I pop something up and it doesn't stay long enough, that's up to you to pause it and to read it. Uh, so don't miss anything. <laughs> Alright, common sense. Alright. Um, and then, you know, we talk about the possibilities of what Sasquatches are doing. Uh, I know a lot of these researchers are, uh, you know... Claiming that Sasquatch broke this, Sasquatch twisted this, Sasquatch made this. I found shelters out in the woods, which at least they appear to be shelters, but they weren't real shelters. I'm not saying they weren't real shelters. Well, I am saying that. They weren't shelters or weren't formed to be used as shelters. But other known wildlife, and possibly Sasquatch, have used various um, forms of natural damage as shelter okay so yes I believe it's possible that uh, a lot of our known wildlife especially bears will use fallen timber in formations that appear to be like huts and shelters you know like especially um honeysuckle huts anyone who's familiar with the thick growth of honeysuckle the vines and the heavy growth um for you know what the honeysuckle is uh, very known for doing it forms like a natural hut. Some of them look like little houses. Some of them will just have overhangs. Um, for example, I've pulled this up. I'll, here's a picture right here that I'm using. Uh, I took this for illustration for example, for educational purposes. Right here, you have this is a honeysuckle hut right here that you see right here that my daughter's underneath of. Um, and I thought it was the coolest thing. Uh, there's Right in the same area, there's actually other areas clusters that they form shelters and they look like little huts kind of like uh almost like the huts like a um a smurf but of course smurfs use mushrooms <laughs> but these huts here are basically like little dome looking huts where they were hauled out they where a lot of deer like to use a deer and other wildlife will go into them use them as a natural shelter which is awesome um i found evidence of different wildlife using these for natural shelter. So that's something to consider. Folks, uh, hold on, we got uh, we got another someone else jumping in here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, see what this gentleman here has to say. Alright. I find a damn Sasquatch. 
Well, stop leaving honey buns out there in the woods. You ain't gonna get no Sasquatch that way. You might bring in a bear, but you ain't gonna get no damn Sasquatch. Okay? Well, let me tell you one more thing. Alright? If you think you're on the trail of a Sasquatch because you see a bunch of broken trees, those trees don't mean a damn thing. Sasquatch ain't breaking them trees. That's the wind. If it ain't the wind, it's a bear. If it ain't the bear, it's a rotted tree. People, get some common sense. Know what else is responsible for what's out there. If you think you're going to find a Sasquatch, well, guess when? He's already finding you because he's watching you when you're out there. All right. Well, look here. Look here, Cousin Dan. You keep up the great work. And, uh, yeah. This is your cousin up in the woods. Uh, keep an eye on you. I've been watching your work, son. Keep it up. I'll be back. All right. To all you other so-called researchers out there, you might could learn a thing or two. Get some common sense. Think logical. Well, God bless. <laughs> I didn't know I had a cousin in the woods. Well, <laughs> that is pretty cool. Uh, man, you heard from my cousin I didn't know I had. Uh Kind of looks familiar. Uh, anyway, thanks for the words, and uh, I'm glad I got people looking out for me and looking and watching my work. Uh, that's great. Um, I'm not an expert. I mean, I guess people have nothing better else to do if they're paying attention to me. Uh, either that, they're interested in learning the truth and learning something logical, right? <laughs> um, anyway... I am going to welcome your questions. If you have anything else you want to say or share to me, uh, I welcome your feedback. I welcome um, anything, your corrective, uh, your constructive uh, criticism. I mean, because, you know, what I present to you is, you know, uh, what I want people to understand. I use these tools and these presentations as a tool or a way to open your mind and get people to think. There's different sides to everything. Uh, a majority of people only see one side of research. A majority of people only hear one side of one person say so. Okay? Stop. C consider others. Consider the fact that other people might have something more knowledgeable. Consider the fact that other people might have other real common sense consider the possibility that the younger ones among you might have a fresher sense of knowledge okay uh, some of those who are among you might have a little bit far-fetched mind a wider imagination where the imagination has gone too deep and expressed openly what they're calling as fact and details are a corrupted way of a blinded imagination, a blinded way of intelligence that's not even intelligent at all. It's They poison so many and people follow them because they want to believe so desperately in the fantasy world. There's a logical way of understanding everything that's presented. And to understand logically, I'm presenting a logical way of understanding, but it's up to you to comprehend it that way. You got to come down to earth. You got to realize that what's being presented is real. That's up to you to distinguish what's real, what's not. Okay? It's bad enough a lot of people realize or not realize, but believe or think that Sasquatch is not real. Okay? For those who want to present to the skeptic or non believer, the woo, the cloaking, the magical fantasies of the world of Bigfoot. You're never going to get science to acknowledge it. You know, it, there's a reality that people don't live in, but there's a reality that we need to come and start facing. Until you ignore and leave the woo and all the magical cloaking and the portals alone, and step away from that fantasy, just maybe the scientific community might start taking you and me a little bit more serious. For those who are trying to be serious and, and throw real research out there, such as myself, and you understand a lot of people don't realize how I get offended easily and I get upset very easily, because what I do is serious, and what I do, and this is my passion, yes, I take this a little too seriously, but I'm an investigator, I gotta dig for the truth no matter what, 
I'll find ways to present my side of the evidence. I'll present in ver in any way possible. I'll change my methods every time to get a point across. I don't care what it takes. I will get the point across, even if it's ugly. Sometimes we have to do what's necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, message me on Facebook. Maybe we'll have an open discussion later tonight. Uh, maybe on a live podcast. I don't know. It's up to you. I'm looking for serious individuals who want to join me on a podcast. If you're one of them, let's hear from you. Keep it real. God bless.